WrestleMania is the be-all and end-all of WWE's calendar year. The event has been hyped up so much since its 1985 birth that even in something of a creative nadir like this one, the show still almost sells itself. It's the peak of programming during each 12-month cycle, has become a lucrative brand all on its own, and is by far the most important money spinner on the schedule, if no longer the most lucrative. However, this sadly hasn't stopped there being a fair share of high-profile screw-ups over the years. Now, we're not talking about the Gronk getting held up on the guardrail here, we're talking about catastrophes happening in the main event. Production botches, brain-rattling injuries, regrettable mistakes, selfish decisions, and inattentive security, it might be the grandest stage of them all, but that doesn't mean things don't go wrong. Each one sadly leading to discussions amongst fans about the botches themselves rather than how wonderful the card ending headliner was. My name is Adam Cleary and these are 7 WWE WrestleMania endings that were botched. Number 7, WrestleMania 27. The Miz has headlined WrestleMania exactly once, and ironically, he can barely remember anything about it. He suffered a nasty concussion midway through his match with John Cena that caused the then WWE Champion to forget where the hell he was, what he was doing, and why he was surrounded by thousands of fans while doing it. Truth be told, the bout wasn't exactly a fitting headliner for WrestleMania anyway, but that's another story. Obviously, one member of the final match at Wrestle Freakin' Mania wasn't supposed to suffer a brain injury before its conclusion. Cena ended up having to steer Miz through the final few moments before a crappy double countout was rectified by The Rock's interference. He restarted the match, screwed Cena, and then pasted The Miz post-match as well. The whole thing just felt like a giant gross misfire. Miz was out of it, Rocky seemingly had some weird power to change Mania main events to his liking, and the show ended with a babyface helping a heel win. Fans in Atlanta were not pleased, which given this all happened less than half an hour after Snooki beat Lay Cool is quite the impressive feet. Number 6, WrestleMania 33. Yes, your humble presenter was there in attendance for this one, and if you watched it at home on telly, allow me to reassure you that it was so, so, so much more depressing in person. The Undertaker, a childhood hero to millions, flopped around like a fish out of water as Roman Reigns fought hard to get him up for a tombstone pile driver. It was a mortifying botch, one that humanized the supernatural awe of Taker and at once made Reigns look like a complete idiot in the process. After that, fans in Orlando just found it hard to get invested. They'd watched an old hero and a new star screw things up in the main event of Mania, and groans began filling the Camping World Stadium. Making things even sadder, some people started leaving. They'd seen enough, couldn't stomach any more pain, and just wanted a bottle of water that didn't cost $10. The Undertaker and Reigns struggled on with the rest of their air quotes epic match and tried to make the best of a bad situation. Referee John Cone's grimace said it all. He, just like everyone else in attendance knew that tombstone was a deal-breaking moment. The big man should arguably have left it there and all would have been forgotten, but he's since doubled, tripled, and quadrupled down on the legacy-destroying big match. The big old div. Number 5, WrestleMania 23. WWE heighten all their security at WrestleMania for, let's just say, understandable reasons. They don't want some pillock sprinting in to make a late bid for fame at any point during the show, and they certainly want to ensure the safety of performers who are rightly concentrating more on their matches than they are their surroundings. I mean, I, for example, would have rushed the ring at WrestleMania 35 so I could celebrate with Kofi had it not been for the attentive and studious work of the security guards. That and the fact I was sitting three quarters of a mile from the actual ring. However, someone didn't do their job at WrestleMania 23. Right before a highly anticipated John Cena vs Shawn Michaels main event, some idiot fan jumped the ringside barrier and attempted to steal a spotlight. The referee looked like he was going to have a coronary, Michaels stayed cool, and Cena wore an expression of complete disgust. However, one unifying factor was that all three probably wanted to rip this tit's head off. How could this happen? The entire show had been smooth for WWE up until that point, but lack security almost ruined everything. Actually, no, sorry, better question. Why couldn't this intrusion have happened earlier in the night when both Sabu and the Sandman were in the ring instead. That I would have paid to see. Number 4, WrestleMania 6. Now this one admittedly stretches the whole botch thing a little bit, but A, it's still worthy of examination, and B, well it's my list isn't it? WrestleMania 6 was supposed to be the dawn of a new era for the WWF. 
Hulk Hogan was old hat and the Ultimate Warrior was a bold new replacement who would lead the company through the 90s. The Ultimate Challenge main event was painstakingly booked to reflect that Warrior was superior to his predecessor. Come the end of their title versus title blockbuster though, Hulk powered out of Warrior's match winning pin right as the referee's hand slapped the mat for three. This subtle one-man protest was an act of self-preservation from one of the savviest politicians in the industry. And it was Hogan's way of reminding everyone that he almost, almost kicked out. Perhaps this was all part of the story and agents were just keeping things open for a rematch. Perhaps Hogan was pulling a quick ad-lib to tarnish Warrior's otherwise definitive win and maintain his own stranglehold on the industry. Perhaps we'll just never know, but either way, it looked weird. Number 3, WrestleMania 8. Oh where, oh where, oh, did Papa Shango go? Now, straight off, yes, you're right, I am an award-winning poet, but more importantly than that, this must have been what WWF officials were screaming as they scrambled behind the curtain to launch Papa Shango out of a goddamn cannon. The Hulk vs. Sid Justice Mania main event was finishing up, and Shango was booked to break up Hulk's pin attempt following his iconic leg drop. But he was late. He was very late. He was very, very, very late, and Sid had to kick out, so the match didn't end. What a spectacular misfire this was. Right there in the final moments of the biggest platform of 1992, a heel kicked out of Hogan's finish for the first time on pay-per-view. Then Shango hit the ring to double-team Hulk before the Ultimate Warrior made his triumphant return and almost gassed himself running down the Hoosier Dome's massive aisle. Mania 8 went off the air with a bogus disqualification result, a knackered warrior, a red-faced Shango, and a clearly annoyed Hogan. Backstage, Vince McMahon was likely calmly and reasonably asking his production team why the interference spot had been mistimed. I mean, I'm sure he was at pains to point out that it was really nobody's fault, guys. He just wanted to understand why the interference spot had been missed time so they could avoid something like this happening on a big stage again. Yeah, I'm sure that all just happened like that and he didn't just simply murder Shag, the nearest person under six foot. Number two, WrestleMania 19. Now, this kind of gets forgotten about, but Brock Lesnar had pulled off a shooting star press before and thus he knew it looked badass to see someone of his size fly so gracefully through the air. He also knew the move would be his WrestleMania moment moment, and he wanted to use the spot against Kurt Angle during the WrestleMania 19 main event. Unfortunately, as I'm willing to bet 99.99999% of you already know, it went wrong. Brock was almost 20 minutes into a rugged physical match when his sweaty frame climbed the ropes to hit the dive. And worse still, Angle was over halfway across the ring. In a moment he'd come to regret, Lesnar tried the shooting star press anyway, failed to fully rotate, and came down hard on his head. The botch was bad enough, but now Brock and Kurt had to come up with a new finish on the fly and do it while one of them could only see cartoon birds chirping around his head. Angle called the remainder of the match to a conclusion cussed dance partner and somehow dragged him through it. Bruce Pritchard and others have since remarked that some in WWE warned Brock against trying the move on a pressure-filled stage like WrestleMania, but he didn't listen. Either surprisingly or entirely unsurprisingly, I'm never sure which, Brock has never once since attempted the move and, well, fair play to him. Number 1, WrestleMania 35. Who would be, in their right mind, a pro wrestling referee? When they're not being asked to look like complete morons in need of a hearing aid because the sound of steel chairs smashing skulls is apparently just out of their frequency range, they're blamed for just being compassionate souls. And that was indeed the fate of one Rod Zapata when he counted three at WrestleMania 35, despite the fact that one of Ronda Rousey's shoulders was clearly off the mat. Look, there it is, clearly not all the way down. You'll never see this still in any of the video packages that document this historic main event, but there it is, not down, so not a valid pin. Zapata's excuse for counting it regardless was that Rousey was in severe pain due to a broken hand. Vince McMahon, though, was having absolutely none of that, and he promptly fined the official for failing to call about like a shoot fight. That financial penalty can sadly not alter history. Mania's first ever women's headliner had been spoiled by three unwanted hand slaps. The live crowd in the MetLife Stadium saw it all, and after eight solid hours of being sat in the same seats, just kind of sighed a bit in disapproval when they should have been losing their minds. They knew that Becky Lynch's crucifix pain on Rousey wasn't supposed to be the ending, and they weren't exactly thrilled that such a historic moment had been botched. 
Still though, if we all thought that was bad, that was nothing compared to what awaited us attempting to get a taxi out of New Jersey. Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and if you're a fan of what you've just seen, then make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts for daily wrestling podcasts, where we not only review Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live, we also discuss the events before and after of pay-per-views. We have roundtable discussions discussing burning wrestling issues, interviews, and a roundup of the week complete with a bloody good quiz, of course, on wrestle culture. Thanks for watching. I've been Adam from What Culture. I'll see you soon.